hums it in a low whisper. There's no way it can steal behind us and do something so major without us noticing. Even if Shadian didn't believe in his own ability to observe, he believed in Hua Chang's. Besides, when it came to gut instincts for danger, he honestly did trust himself quite a bit. Let's retrace our steps and see, Hua Chang said. The two walked side by side and returned the way they came, turning and rounding corners in the cave for a while before they came to a stop. It wasn't that they voluntarily stopped. Rather, there was no more path to go on and they were forced to stop. Even though the tunnel was winding and full of turns, it was still only just the one path. Yet now, before they had even reached the starting point, there was a cold, hard stone wall that had appeared out of nowhere. The two never faltered. Shirin wondered, is this an illusion? Or is this real? A silver butterfly languidly flew over and tapped lightly on that rugged stone wall. There was nothing out of place, but it was forced back. It's real, Ho Chang said. Shinin nodded. Then this is troublesome. There were usually two types of demonic walls. The first type made one see an illusion, meaning one would think that there was a wall when there actually wasn't one. This type was easy to get rid of. Just touch it or give yourself a slap or pour a bucket of cold water to wake up, then go on to touch it. The second type muddled one's sense of direction and memories of the paw. This type was a little more powerful. For example, at a fork in the road, when you thought you had chosen the left, in reality your mind was confounded and you actually went right instead. And the so-called devil's roundabout boiled down to nothing but a small trick. When people step with their left and right feet, there's naturally a slight deviation between the steps. And inhuman creatures can confound one's mind to widen this deviation. Thus, without knowing, when you thought you had been walking in a straight line, in reality, you were walking in a large circle. Once you rounded back to where you started, you would be puzzled. Huh? How did I end up back here again? Okay. However, to the two of them, both methods were but meager tricks. As for this cold stone wall before them, it was actually a third type. It was real. Shirin was just thinking on whether he should brutishly punch through this wall to see what was behind it when he heard Hua Chang speak up. Gugu, give me your hand. Shirin was puzzled. Although puzzled, he still obediently gave Hua Chang his hand. Hua Chang gently grasped his hand and held it in his palm, his other hand hovering over it like he was putting something on him. Shilin held his breath for a moment. Soon after, he raised his hand, curious. This is, he asked. On the third finger of his left hand was a very thin red string, and it was Hua Chang had personally tied it on him. This red string also extended up, long and ceaselessly connecting with the red string knotted around Hua Chang's finger. Hua Chang raised his own hand and showed him the tiny red butterfly knot that was now identical on both their fingers. He smiled. Now we're joined together. Hearing this, Shilin could feel his face grow hot. Maybe he was a little too self-conscious. He hurriedly rubbed his face, scared that Ho Chang might notice his heart was beating faster than normal. He smiled back. Is this some sort of spell? Un. Uh, Ho Chang straightened his expression somewhat and dropped his hand. Even though we won't voluntarily be separating, but just in case, the string won't break and won't grow shorter. If the string doesn't break, then it means the person on the other end is all right. Unless the person is no more. Otherwise, the string will for sure lead to the other. What do you mean, no more? Shilin asked. Dead or dissipated, Hua Chang explained. Shilin was about to speak when suddenly the faint sound of tremors came from the distance. 
He listened tensely and wondered, is someone throwing fists? This power and frequency. It was as if someone was throwing punches heavily at the body of the mountain. Shailen remarked, this power definitely doesn't belong to a mortal. It must be a martial god. Could it be General Pei? It's coming from ahead of us, Ho Chang observed. This ahead naturally meant the way they intended to head in, but then had to turn back because Pei Ming and the others disappeared halfway. However, Pei Ming and the others disappeared behind them. So how could they suddenly reappear ahead? And if it wasn't Pei Ming, then who could it be? The two exchanged a look and walked side by side, ready to check things out. However, halfway down the path, that mountain punching sound suddenly disappeared. It was unknown whether it was intentional or because the energy fueling it had been depleted. But since they had already come this far, why would they turn back? Thus, Shilian and Hua Chen continued to walk in the direction where the sound had come from. A few silver butterflies danced in the bluish darkness of the cave ahead of them, lighting their way. Suddenly, Shilin sharply caught sight of something on, on the stone wall, on the side. What's that? A red string? From afar, they really couldn't tell what it was, but it was exceedingly bizarre. It looked like a red string, but much thicker. It kept twisting, appearing more like a long, red worm. Shilin approached and looked at it closely. Isn't this Panyue Scorpion Snake? Sure enough, it was the bottom half of one of the wine-red scorpion snakes, twisting and throwing its body. Its upper body seemed to be buried in the stone wall. Shinin wondered, did it crawl into a hole and couldn't get out? Probably not, Ho Chan said. The scorpion snake's entire body was hung in midair. Snakes didn't climb walls, so how could it have slithered to such a height before crawling into a hole? Besides, there were many holes on the stone wall, so if it must slither, why pick a small one? This hole was also strange. It was almost the exact shape as a snake's body, which is why it was trapped in it so completely. Shirin wanted to grab hold of that snake and pull it out to see. But that snake was abnormally alert, swinging its tail madly, randomly pricking, almost stinging Shilian. Thus, Ho Chang flicked it. It looked like he did so very casually, but that snake seemed to have been shocked by it and became too stunned to move. Shilian didn't know whether to laugh or to cry and was just about to speak when he suddenly closed his mouth. Do you hear that? he asked. I hear it, Ho Chang said. The two looked ahead at the same time. In the darkness, there was a sound of low breathing, very steady, very calm. The two wraith butterflies dallied and danced around each other and fluttered toward that breathing sound, flying higher and higher, the silver light also lifting higher. Gradually, a pair of hands were illuminated. It was the hands of a person the hands of a man. The back of the hands was spotted with blood, covered with gashes, drooping down like the dead's. Going up further, the messy head of a person was illuminated, and that head was also drooping, as if dead. However, there was no lower body. That's right, this person who was hung so highly upon the stone wall didn't have a lower body. He only wore an upper body, like he was grown straight out of the stone wall. In the past, Shilin had seen some nobles and aristocrats who, when they'd successfully hunted rare game, would cut off the game's head, treat it with chemical solutions to prevent it from rotting, and hang it on the walls of their residence. The sight before him now reminded him of the heads of tigers, buck, wolves, and other such beasts that were hung on those walls neatly in a row. However, this man was clearly still breathing, so he was still alive. 
She then took a step closer. What is this creature? The true body of the mountain spirit? However, there was no response coming from next to him. Shilin suddenly felt his heart go cold. He whipped his head around, and sure enough, Ho Chang was gone. Sun Lang, Shilin exclaimed. Naturally, no one answered, but the man hung on the wall mumbled, like he was talking in his sleep, but about to wake. Under the current circumstances, however, Shilin had not a bit of interest in him. He turned around in a circle twice, standing where he was, when suddenly he remembered the red string tied around his finger and raised it in cheer. Sure enough, that red string was still there, unbroken. Thus Shilin relaxed a little, and he picked up that red string, pulling at it as he walked. He walked and walked, and reached the end of the thread. The other end of this red string was linked into a stone wall. Shilin couldn't believe it. He yanked at it twice, but more red string was pulled out incessantly from within the stone wall, making him wonder. Was Ho Chang actually inside the stone wall at this very moment? When he thought that that might be a possibility, without another word, Shilin raised Feng Xin and was ready to shatter this wall. It unexpectedly, the tip of his sword hadn't even touched the stone wall, when suddenly his sight went black. As if the stone wall before him had suddenly opened a giant mouth, it howled and swallowed his entire person whole. The blackness didn't go away quickly, and as Shailian was swallowed, it grew darker and darker. All around was sand and mud crushing at him, exceedingly suffocating. The sand and mud was also moving endlessly. The feeling was like he was swallowed into the stomach of a giant monster, and that monster had also eaten a bunch of other things besides him, tumbling everything in its stomach, trying to digest. It also felt like he had sunk into quicksand, unable to exert power though he had the strength, and the more he tried to struggle, the deeper he'd sink. Shilin wanted to break the wall to escape, but then thought that perhaps Hua Chang could be in here. So instead of backing out, he moved forward, swinging his arms to break away the earth and sand as he pulled at the red string to continue onwards. Just then, a hand suddenly stretched out, seizing his wrist without fault. Shilin was alarmed. Who? The moment he opened his mouth, it was filled with a mouthful of mud, and he spat it out miserably. As for that hand, it clutched at him and pulled, pulling him into someone's arms, a familiar voice coming from above his head. Gogo, it's me. Hearing that voice, Shailen's entire person relaxed. He hugged the other tightly, blurting out. Thank goodness, the red string didn't break. I really did find you. Ho Chang also embraced him back tightly, speaking with conviction. It didn't break. I found you too. Turns out, the weird incident that happened to the two was the same. Shilin was observing that half-bodied man hung high on the wall, and Ho Chang was keeping an eye on their surroundings, guarding against anything that might ambush them from the shadows. Yet unexpectedly, it only took a blink of an eye for Shilin, who was standing next to him, to disappear. A stone wall erected out of nowhere standing in his stead. Ho Chang pulled at the red string, searching as he followed, and discovered the ends were linked into the wall, so he went in directly to look for Shilian. In truth, from the very beginning, there was just the extra wall separating them. But both had thought the other was within the wall, so they both went in at the same time. Shilian repeated again, for the umpteenth time mentally, that Hua Chang really thought of everything. Thank goodness we're linked by a red string. Otherwise, who knows if we'd find each other. No wonder General Pei and the others disappeared so abruptly. So it wasn't anyone who ambushed, but rather they were swallowed by the mountain spirit. That's right, Hua Chang said. We didn't pick a good spot. 
and ended up digging right into the stomach of the mountain spirit. Shinin softly cleared his throat. That's right. They were currently, no doubt, in the stomach of one of the three mountain spirits. At the time when Yin Yu asked Shinin whether to dig upward, the chosen location just happened to be the resting place of these mountain spirits, and Shinin cheerfully agreed. His luck truly was completely out of this world, no lie. The sand and mud from all around were crushing their space, squishing tighter and tighter, becoming more and more suffocating. Shilin felt that they really shouldn't stay in that place any longer. He asked, how do we get out now? Ho Chang replied, it got dug through at the bottom, so it's not very happy. It's trying to digest us at the moment, so it's a bit troublesome. But rest assured, Coco, we'll get out eventually. Then he joked, to die buried together probably feels like this. When Shenin heard, he was slightly taken aback, but the corners of his lips actually curved upward. When he noticed, he hastily suppressed it. The half-bodied man outside was probably also swallowed, by the mountain spirit. The mountain punching sound we heard must be him trying to escape, pounding at the stone walls. He and that scorpion snake are the same. They weren't swallowed fully and were only half devoured, which was why the effect was exceedingly creepy. But he's not someone from the party that came to Mount Tonglu with us, Ho Chang pointed out. Chilin suddenly recalled that messy hair and said, Wait, I know who that was. It was probably Chi Ying. Ho Chang thought for a bit before he seemed to remember. Oh, the one with the curly hair. I wonder if he's all right, Shilin said. Did he pass out? He seemed to have lost consciousness earlier. He's fine. He's just asleep, Ho Chang said. How do you know? Shilin asked. I left a few silver butterflies outside. I sent one over just now. My right eye can see the present situation outside. Just as the words left his lips, he hummed lightly, seeming to have seen something strange. What's happened outside? Shilin asked. Ho Chang didn't say anything, only bowing his head slightly, gently lifting Shilin's chin as the two touched for him. Shilin's eyes widened, but then he closed his eyes, then reopened them. This is truly magical, he said. His right eye seemed to see a scene completely different from what was before him. Although still dark, he could still see the general silhouettes of things. The silver butterfly that was monitoring the external world seemed to be hiding behind a bunch of weeds. Below the scene, a black shadow was slowly approaching. Shilin whispered, Someone's come. I wonder who it is. Where is your silver butterfly hiding? It's in his hair, Ho Chang said. The light is hidden. It won't be discovered. That black shadow finally approached close enough and lifted his head, his face pale white. You knew? Shilin asked. 